16, first eight verses. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came to the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. They said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he said to them, Be not affrighted. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him as he said unto you. And they went quickly and fled from the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. They said nothing to anybody because they were afraid. I want to preach from this subject today. Repeat it with me and say, you ought to say something. You ought to say something. Amen, amen, amen. Just turn, just look in the back of you at your neighbor. Look at him cross-eyed like y'all do anyway. Tell them you call yourself saved. You ought to say something sometime. Somebody ought to know something about your salvation. I wish I had some help in the building. Y'all say something about the Lakers. I call them the fakers. I just, I just messed up with the Laker fans in here. Y'all say something about the Celtics. Oh, I mean, I ain't, I ain't hit the right team yet, huh? <laughs> huh? Y'all say something about y'all feeling the team. Y'all say something about the... Oh, Cavaliers, huh? King James. Hey, amen. They ought to say something about the Lord. Can I get an amen? amen. Now, in this particular text, in the book of Mark, I call the Markian version of the uh, scripture the realist version of the gospel. For Mark appears to recognize the frailty of the human spirit. You may remember the story of a second touch uh, that's recorded in Mark 8. Jesus needed to touch the man that was blind a second time because the man had a weak response to God's first touch. You see, sometimes it's us and our response to God that creates our circumstance, not that God is not powerful enough to deliver us out of something, but it is our response to God's touch that leaves us still lacking. Amen. And I don't think the gospel loses any power because of the perspective that man is weak only that the power and the purpose of God is able to accomplish things of value when we fully receive them. So we're in an era, brothers and sisters, where people think that they make it all by themselves. And I'm here to knock on somebody's door and, and just step into your living room and tell you that you haven't made it where you are all by yourself. We live in a day and age where people actually believe that they pull themselves up by their bootstraps. Am I in the right house? Amen. If God didn't bless you with boots, you wouldn't have no straps to pull. Amen. Where folk think that, 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 that they got it going on and because you drive what you drive and live where you live and work where you work because you're all of that. And a bag of what? Doritos and a 
tall glass of Kool-Aid too. Hey, Amen. You ought to look at somebody and say, you ain't all that. Amen. Hey, don't be scared of them. Don't be scared of them. Look at them again. You, you, you wanted to say that to them all week long. Go on and say it to them. Tell them you ain't all that. Every single one of us here stand on borrowed blessings. The air that you breathe is borrowed air. Come on, somebody. God is blessing us right now. Why? Not because we're all that, but because somebody prayed for me. Somebody prayed for you. Had you on their mind. Took out time to pray for you. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad they prayed. Oh, yeah, I'm glad they prayed for me. There's a special edition. I, I handed it to the senior pastor today of the Point of View uh, magazine called Seniors in Action. Amen. Uh, maybe next year, Sister Barbara will be in here. Amen. But uh, until that time. Until that time. There's an article in there uh, that I wrote saluting uh, our senior pastor and men of his generation. Amen. The thing that amazes me, my brothers and sisters, is how our foreparents did so much with seemingly so little. And we have all of the accoutrements of life. We have all of the resources that we need, but we seemingly can't do with everything that we need what they were able to do with nothing at all. Y'all ain't going to help me preach in here, but I'm going I'm to preach it anyway. They used to cook. Oh, yeah. That sounds like a strange word in here, huh? <laughs> the, the women used to cook for families of 10 and 15, and everybody ate, and now... Sisters, please, y'all don't get upset with me. Now you got two kids and can't have dinner at the table on no day of the week. Y'all ain't going to help me in here now. And we, worry, we worry about childhood obesity and stuff because we're raising children on McDonald's french fries and cheeseburgers and Big Macs and Taco Bell. Y'all ain't going to help me preach in here. But you ought to look at some sister and say, you ought to cook sometime. Hey man, you ought to cook some some point in the week. You ought to be ashamed of yourself raising your children out ramen noodles. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach in here today. It amazed me what the older generation could do, and they didn't have no grant money. They weren't on the well affair. I just messed up half the church. I'm going to preach on this side. They didn't get no food stamps. But they were able to make it work. Now we got a generation, and I don't know what has happened to the current generation. But I believe, uh, Sister Baptiste, that one of the secrets to our early successes was this was that we had to rely on the telling and the retelling of the stories of our life. They didn't put us on CNN and MSNBC back in the day. Amen. They did not record our history. They didn't even have get our birth certificates right. And so the only way that we could tell about the goodness of God and how people got over was to tell our stories. Our historical tradition is embodied in our oral tradition. Storytelling was our method of ensuring that the record was not tampered by forces that would seek to destroy, deny, or demean our quest for freedom. So I like to look at the tradition of telling the history and seeing the repetition of the story, the retelling of the story to give strength to the next generation. Brothers, is this power in telling the story. The telling of the story of how God brought you through dangers seen and unseen reinforces the fact